Previously, we have learned about three types of case law, such as Boyce law, Charles law, and Avogadro's law. But actually, there are four types of case laws, including Dalton's law. Okay, if let's say you tak hafal pasal case law, you just need to remember A, B, C, and also D. A stands for Avogadro's law, B stands for Boyce law, C stands for Charles law, and D stands for Dalton's law. Okay, cuma yang terlibat di dalam pembikinan ideal gas law equation PV equals to NRT hanyalah ABC types of gas law. Okay, apa tu ABC types of gas law? Avogadro's law, Boyce law and Charles law. Dalton's law tak terlibat di dalam ideal gas law equation tetapi Dalton's law adalah salah satu gas law yang you kena tahu. So now let us learn about Dalton's law. Dalton's law ni dia wujud sebab di dalam satu kontena you ada dua jenis gas. Macam contohnya gas A dan juga gas B. Kalau let's say you ada satu je jenis gas dalam satu kontena macam gas A sahaja penuh dengan gas A punya partikel tak perlu risau sebab you hanya kena cari um, pressure of gas A sahaja. Tapi kalau dalam satu kontena you ada dua jenis gas um, that means each of these gas ada Partial pressure mereka masing-masing Ada pressure mereka masing-masing Sebabkan mereka ada pressure masing-masing That's what we call as partial pressure So kiranya Kalau A ni Dia akan releasekan Pressure dia yang sendiri Dikenali sebagai partial pressure A Kalau gas B ni pula Dia akan keluarkan gas dia sendiri That is known as partial pressure B So if let's say Di dalam satu container You ada dua jenis partial pressure How do you want to find the total pressure? So, if you want to find the total pressure of a mixture of a non-reacting gases, you can make sure this gas tak react uh, together. Yeah? So, but bila dia tak react together, it's going to be two different entity. So, if it's at constant temperature, the total pressure will be the sum of the partial pressure exerted by each of the constituent gases in the mixture. Contohnya, dalam container ini ada gas A dan gas B. So, nak cari the total pressure, of this container, semua gas dalam kat container ni ada dua je kan. So, it's going to be total pressure equals to partial pressure A campurkan dengan partial pressure B. But what if, let's say, dalam container you ada tiga jenis gas yang berbeza. You ada gas A, gas B dan juga gas C. So, sama juga kaedah dia. Uh, since that dia punya definition of the Dalton's, Dalton's law ni ialah total pressure ni. Um, kalau let's say for the non-reacting Uh, gases is going to be the sum of partial pressure of each gases in the mixture. So, kalau let's say you ada uh, tiga jenis gas sekalipun, it's going to be total pressure uh, is going to be partial pressure of A kena plus dengan partial pressure of B kena plus with the partial pressure of C. Okay, sebagai contoh, if let's say kita tak panggil gas A, gas B, gas C lah. Kita ada dua jenis gas which is gas um, NH3 dan juga gas hydrogen gas kat dalam container ni. So, if let's say you nak find the total pressure of uh, all of the gases in this container since the NH3 tak react dengan H2, it's going to be partial pressure of Total, nak cari total pressure dia is going to be partial pressure of NH3 campurkan dengan partial pressure of hydrogen gas. Okay. So, kiranya Dalton's law ni dia fokus kepada non-reacting gases in a container. Kalau let's say it is more than two gas. Okay. Kalau satu gas, tak perlu nak guna Dalton's law. Kalau let's say you ada more than one or two or three, then you can use the Dalton's law. I know that previously I have talked to you to find the total pressure in a gas uh, dalam container. Kalau given that you ada dua different gases, it's going to be the summation of partial pressure of each of the gases in the container. So, contohnya kalau you ada gas A dan gas B, the total pressure is going to be partial pressure of gas A campurkan dengan partial pressure of gas B. Okay, kalau let's say you ada dua lah. Kalau ada tiga, ada tiga lah. So, ni equation yang pertama to find the 
uh, total pressure kalau uh, according to Dalton's law but actually you have another formula that you can use to find the total pressure for different gases uh, in a container okay which pressure total pt will be equals to nt adalah number of mole total kalikan dengan rt over v so macam mana you dapat formula yang kedua ni you dapat formula yang kedua ni so from here okay starting from here so if let's say dalam satu container you ada gas a dengan gas b Uh, so, mestilah diorang share the volume yang sama kan Sebab they are in the same container So, kalau you nak cari partial pressure A So, ni adalah formula pertama tau nak cari partial pressure Kalau you nak cari partial pressure A From the ideal gas law equation uh, You know that partial pressure A is equals to Number of mole of A times with RT Bahagikan dengan volume Tak payah nak volume A sebab diorang dalam satu container So, volume sama saja, temperature sama saja because they are in the same container. Yang membezakan ialah number of mole of gas A. Dan juga partial uh, pressure ataupun pressure yang exerted by gas A. Okay, and then the, nak, kalau you nak cari uh, partial pressure of gas B pula, is going to be partial pressure of gas B equals to number of mole of gas B kalikan dengan RT bahagikan dengan volume. So, we know that from the first uh, formula of total pressure, we know that if we want to find the total pressure, uh, PT, pressure total, equals to partial pressure of A campurkan dengan partial pressure of B. So, macam nak cari partial pressure of A dengan partial pressure of B, we can find it through the ideal gas equation. Kalau partial pressure of A and A are T over B, kalau partial pressure of B and B are T over B. So sekarang ni, kita boleh find the similarity here which we know that RT over V ni adalah benda yang sama. Yang membezakan hanyalah NA dengan NB. Nombor of mole yang membeza. So sekarang ni, kita bolehlah satukan benda yang sama dan satukan benda yang different. Benda yang sama ialah NA dengan NB. Benda yang different adalah Uh, benda yang different ialah NA dengan NB. Benda yang sama ialah RT over V. Okay. Uh, so, sekarang ni kita tahu pula number of mole of total gas is equivalent to number of mole of uh, the gas yang present here. In this case, we ada dua saja, So, it's going to be number of mole of gas A jumpa dengan number of mole of gas B. So, that's why you are the second formula to find the Total pressure which is pressure total pressure equals to number of mole of total for any for all of the gases in the container kalikan dengan RT bahagikan dengan volume. From the previous slide, um, ni saya dah bagi tahu the first formula to find the partial pressure for a particular gas. Okay. Partial pressure of a particular gas is going to be, kalau let's say gas A, jadilah dia partial pressure of gas A is equals to number of mole of gas A RT over B, kan? Okay, this is the first formula to find a partial pressure of a particular gas. But this is the second formula to find a partial pressure of a particular gas if let's say you are given gas A so it's going to be partial pressure of a particular gas equals to X X ni apa? X ni ialah mole fraction mole fraction of the gas mole fraction ialah number of mole of the gas bahagikan dengan number of mole of the total gas in the container kalikan dengan total pressure so if let's say You nak kena cari partial pressure, boleh cari melalui dua cara. Tengoklah keadaan. Kalau soalan tu dia bagi um, R, T dan juga V, you can use this uh, formula to find the partial pressure of a particular gas. But then if let's say soalan tak bagi R, T and V, soalan bagi total pressure, soalan suruh kamu cari number of mole and whatsoever ataupun dia bagi mass tapi you can find the mass and number of mole through the mass. So, you have to use this equation to find the 
particular uh, gas tu punya partial pressure. Okay, so how do you get this equation is from the derivation ideal gas law equation lah. Juga, and then after that, you know that uh, partial pressure of A, uh, kalau ikut sekaligus to PV equals to NRT, you masukkan untuk gas A, it's going to be PAV equals to NART. Kalau let's say to find the total pressure from the ideal gas law equation, PTV equals to NTRT. After that, you got ratio between them and you can cancel out what is the same. So, you will cancel out volume RT. So, what is left is PA over PT equals to NA over NT. So, you know that NA over NT ni adalah apa? formula uh, mole fraction, kan? Uh, so that's why kita boleh simpulkan yang to find the partial pressure of a particular gas of any gas uh, kalau in this case gas A lah is going to be PA equals to mole fraction A times with total pressure. So for the first example dia bagi tahu kat sini di dalam satu container you have the mixture of gases such as gas carbon dioxide dan juga gas oxygen. And then dia bagi the number of mole of carbon dioxide ni ialah 0.1 mol. Number of mole of oxygen gas adalah uh, 0.3 mol. Okay. Determine the partial pressure of the gases if the total pressure is 760 mm mercury at a certain temperature. Okay. So sekarang ni, hmm, soalan bagi kamu information pasal oxygen gas punya number of mol soalan bagi number of mol of carbon dioxide soalan bagi information on pressure total tapi soalan suruh kamu cari partial pressure kan misal bagi tahu kamu ada dua jenis equation partial pressure yang pertama kalau according to ideal gas law uh, PA equals to NA RT over V okay and the second one is PA equals to number of mole of A bagikan number of mole of total kalikan dengan total pressure. But I think from this example, it can be shown that you don't need the ideal gas law equation punya um, derivation to find the partial pressure. You can use the equation yang kedua untuk find the partial pressure. Since equation yang kedua ni is not from the ideal gas equation that's why you don't need to change a thing in here you don't even need to change the unit of pressure to become atm it is fine in its own to be millimeter mercury okay so apa yang you kena cari sekarang you dah ada you nak cari partial pressure kan this is something that you need to find into each of the gases here since you add the gas oxygen dan juga uh, carbon dioxide. So, you need to find the partial pressure of oxygen apa. Partial pressure of carbon dioxide pula apa. Okay. Uh, lepas tu, number of mole. You dah tahu number of mole masing-masing. Okay. You dah tahu number of mole of carbon dioxide dengan oxygen. Number of mole total ni is something that you need to find. You need to work on. Okay. Tak payah find pun. You kena kira saja. Number of mole total kan equals to number of mole of all of the gases yang ada dekat dalam container kan. In this case, you ada number of mole of oxygen gas dengan carbon dioxide gas. Sebab you ada, you janganlah pula number of mole total you buat equals to Na plus Nb. Janganlah bentul. Okay. Uh, you gantikanlah A dengan B ni dengan information yang dibagi dalam question. Kalau let's say you ada carbon dioxide, masukkan A ni carbon dioxide. Kalau B ni oxygen gas, masukkan B ni oxygen gas. Okay. Uh, so, number of total is something that you can work on with pressure total dah dibagi. Okay. So, boleh tak cari partial pressure? Boleh. From Dalton's law, okay, to find the partial pressure of each, uh, you tahu dia punya the second formula to find the partial pressure ialah PA equals to XAPT kan? Ataupun kalau you 
um, elaborate a bit about the equation is going to be pressure pressure of gas A equals to number of mole of gas A number of mole of total dengan kalikan dengan total pressure tapi again you janganlah bendul you janganlah uh, biarkan A ni begitu sahaja sekarang ni dia dah bagi dah dalam soalan the real gas which is carbon dioxide dengan oxygen gas so what you need to find is you find first the carbon dioxide punya partial pressure or either one tak kisahlah ok so if you want to find the carbon dioxide punya partial pressure from Dalton's law you tahu yang mole fraction kalikan dengan pressure total mole fraction pula ialah number of mole of gas yang uh, you nak cari ni in this case carbon dioxide bagi kan dengan total number of mole uh, yang kita dah kira before this Okay, kalikan dengan total pressure in uh, millimeter mercury since di dalam millimeter mercury so you will get the um, you, you will get your partial pressure of your gas carbon dioxide ni jawapan dia pun in millimeter mercury okay and the second one okay you boleh cari juga uh, partial pressure of oxygen gas through the equation um, PA um, XAPT XL mole fraction kalikan dengan total pressure so bila you kira mole fraction of oxygen gas kalikan dengan total pressure and you will get the partial pressure of oxygen gas in millimeter mercury as well okay ini kalau jalan yang panjang kalau jalan yang singkat Okay, you tahu di dalam container uh, tadi kan, dalam container ni you ada dua gas kan, you ada oxygen gas and you ada carbon dioxide gas. So, kalau you tahu yang total pressure is the total of partial pressure of each of the gases in the container. So, kalau total pressure in this case, total pressure is equal to partial pressure of carbon dioxide campurkan dengan partial pressure of oxygen. So, sekarang ni kalau let's say you dah tahu uh, total pressure apa, pressure partial pressure of carbon dioxide apa, you just need to find the uh, partial pressure of oxygen gas. So, if you want to find the partial pressure of oxygen gas, you need to make the Partial pressure of oxygen gas as a subject, therefore, total pressure has to be subtracted with partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So, since mereka di dalam unit millimeter mercury, so you will get the answer for partial pressure of oxygen gas is in millimeter mercury and still the same. Walaupun you ikut cara yang ni pun dapat 570O, you ikut cara macam ni pun 570O. Previously, in example 1, you must be wondering, um, should we change the pressure unit millimeter mercury into ATM? Actually, nope if the question doesn't ask you to. And also, nope if let's say the equation tak melibatkan PV equals to NRT. Sebab macam ideal gas law equation, apa yang membuatkan kamu kena change everything in SI unit is because kehadiran R tersebut. R ni adalah gas constant. Kadaran gas constant ni yang menyebabkan everything need to be in SI unit. But then from the Dalton's law that we have used in example 1, it doesn't require R, kehadiran R. Kita tak guna pun PV equals to NRT. Kita guna formula yang kedua. Formula Dalton's law equation yang kedua untuk find the total pressure. So, uh, and to find the apa partial pressure so that's why we don't need to change the millimeter mercury into SI unit ATM sebab apa sebab tiada kehadiran R tiada kehadiran gas constant okay so enough with example 1 example 2 uh, dia cakap a sample of gas with pressure 5.88 ATM contains 1.2 gram of CH4, 0.4 gram of H2 and 0.1 gram of helium gas. So calculate the partial pressure of CH4, H2 and HE in the mixture and what is the partial pressure of CH4 and H2 if HE is removed. Okay again so I'll suruh kamu cari partial pressure again so uh, partial pressure ada dua. Okay. Yang pertama, you boleh gunakan pressure pressure A equals to Na 
RT over V. Yang kedua, you boleh guna equation. Nak cari pressure pressure of sesuatu gas tu equals to XA. XA tu apa? Mole fraction of A kalikan dengan total pressure. But I think in this case, you will not be using the equation yang melibatkan ideal gas law equation. So, Uh, you can, sebabkan tadi information temperature volume dia hanya bagi information total pressure ok, so you gunalah equation yang kedua, so you need to find the number of mole for each of the gases here ok, number of mole of CH4, number of mole of H2 and also number of mole of HE, kemudian you need to calculate the number of mole total For each, uh, for all of the gases there, okay, to find the partial pressure for each of the gas. So from the information given, you find the number of mole for each of the gases first. Which if we start with number of mole CH4, ah, uh, kita nak cari number of mole of CH4. It must be from the formula mass of CH4 bagi dengan molar mass of CH4 and now we will get the number of mole of CH4 is 0.075 mole and the number of mole of hydrogen gas pula um, sama juga mass of molar mass and we will get the number of mole of hydrogen gas number of mole of helium gas pun sama mass of bukan dengan molar mass of helium gas and you will get the number of mole of helium gas Okay, after you have found the number of mole for each of the gases, you nak kena cari partial pressure kan for each of the gases. So, you know that from the Dalton's Law Equation, uh, if you want to find the partial pressure of a particular gas, it must be equals to the mole fraction times the total pressure. Okay, mole fraction pula uh, is equals to mole fraction equals to number of mole of a particular gas bahagikan dengan number of mole of total okay so for example here if i want to find the number the partial pressure of um, ch4 is going to be equals to the uh, mole fraction of ch4 times with total pressure total pressure dah dibagi Uh, mole fraction of CH4 ialah number of mole of CH4 yang kita kira tadi bahagikan dengan total number of mole for all of the gases here so I will get the partial pressure of CH4 is 1.47 atm ok, partial pressure of hydrogen gas pula is the number of mole of hydrogen gas divided by the number of mole total for all of the gases times with the total pressure I will get 3.94 atm ok Pressure pressure of helium gas pula ialah number of mole of helium gas divided by number of mole of total for all of the gases here times with the total pressure it is 0.49 atm. Okay, so the pressure pressure semua unit dalam atm since that the uh, total pressure since that the total pressure unit the in atm. That's why dia punya partial pressure akan follow the unit of the uh, total pressure since that kalau if you tengok kat sini uh, mole fraction ni dia unitless because you can cancel out the unit what is left is unit atm soalan B pula dia cakap what will happen to the partial pressure of CH4 yang baru dan juga partial pressure of hydrogen gas yang baru If, let's say, helium gas is removed, the answer is no change in the partial pressure of CH4 dengan hydrogen gas if we remove the helium. Why? Okay, sekarang ni, since that uh, dalam container tu, kita dah kick out helium gas. So, helium gas no more. Sekarang ni hanyalah ada CH4 dan juga hydrogen gas. Okay, so nak kira partial pressure for yang partial pressure new untuk CH4 dengan partial pressure new untuk hydrogen gas ok still sama kita guna equation mole fraction kalikan dengan total pressure so sekarang ni total pressure dia akan jadi different ok uh, number of mole number of mole total ni this number of mole kita kita ambil from previous punya calculation ya. Yeah. this one ialah from previous punya calculation uh, di mana number of mole of CH4 yang kita dapat calculation before this is 0.075 
number of mole of hydrogen gas is 0.2 previously. So, the number of mole total adalah 0.275 mole kalau kita dah kita helium out. And the total pressure, total pressure, this one point, we got it from the previous calculation, yeah. From previous calculation, um, the partial pressure of CH4 is 1.47 and the partial pressure of hydrogen gas is 3.94. So now, the total pressure will be 5.41 atm. So, mana you dapat this? Uh, partial pressure, you dapat from the partial pressure yang old okay, yang dah lama yang old tapi kita kena kira the new the new uh, partial pressure since that, the helium gas is kicked out, tapi kita dapat total pressure untuk kira calculation yang new ni daripada old partial pressure of CH4 dengan hydrogen gas Okay, so to find the new partial pressure of CH4, it's going to be the mole fraction of CH4 times with total pressure. So, mole fraction of CH4 ialah number of mole of CH4 yang you dapat from previous calculation. Okay, kalau yang kali biru ni from previous calculation lah. Okay, and then uh, bahagikan dengan 0.275. Uh, this is something new because you just calculated it. From here, okay. And then, kalikan dengan total pressure 5.41. Ini pun new juga yang you dah calculated just now. Therefore, the partial pressure of CH4 yang new adalah 1.477 atm. Partial pressure of hydrogen gas yang new pun sama juga. 0.2 ni daripada kiraan yang lama. Okay, yang previously. Okay, bagikan dengan 0.275 ialah kiraan yang baru yang di sini. 5 kalikan dengan total pressure 5.41 kiraan yang baru kat sini and you will get 3.933 so this is the new pressure partial pressure for CH4 dengan um, hydrogen gas okay while this is the old partial pressure for CH4 and also for um, hydrogen gas tapi you tengok sama kan Sama lah. Uh, ni sama dengan ni. Sama je dengan yang old. Since that the partial pressure for each of the gases yang baru sama dengan yang old. Therefore, we can conclude here that there will be no change in partial pressure if let's say the helium gas is removed. You dah proofkan mathematically. Okay. Okay, the next thing that you need to know about Dalton's law ialah soalan kadang-kadang suka um, bagi tahu gas tu is collected uh, over water. So, kiranya kalau let's say collection of gas by displacement of water, you kena consider uh, the fact that when you collect the gas, akan ada gas water vapor sekali. So, macam mana tu? So, contohnya lah kalau let's say this is how water displacement method. Kalau you nak collect gas by water displacement method, di mana you akan ada basin, beaker, and then akan ada tube yang akan tubekan gas tersebut. So, let's say, you masukkan gas. Gas apa, tak kisahlah gas apa-apa. In this case, if let's say you masukkan oxygen gas. Okay. So, if let's say you masukkan oxygen gas dekat tube tu, uh, so, bila you masukkan je oksigen gas dekat tube tu, apa yang berlaku? Dia akan ada bubbling here. Okay. So, inilah dia water displacement. You nak collect gas by water displacement method. So, apa yang berlaku kat sini ialah you kena consider the gas from here until here. So, you kena tahu um, actually, bila let's say you nak collect gas from water displacement method is not just only oxygen gas yang ada tau you tengok ni this is air kan this is water this is H2O water ok so apa yang berlaku gas yang naik turun naik turun ni bukan gas oxygen saja tau sebab you bukan tube dia macam tu je sebab you tube over water so you must consider um, gas yang air ni juga 
hasilkan dekat this um, apa tu ruang so therefore actually okay apa yang berlaku sekarang dekat uh, this section you akan ada oxygen gas dan juga water vapor water vapor tu adalah H2O di dalam bentuk gas okay so if let's say soalan bagi tahu yang gas ni is collected over water displacement method ataupun this gas is collected over water disebut saja water you tak boleh consider oxygen gas saja you kena consider the fact that the total pressure in this space is gonna include the water vapor so the total pressure in this space is gonna be Uh, partial pressure of oxygen gas plus kan dengan partial pressure of H2O since particle kat dalam ni ada oxygen gas dan juga water vapor H2O adalah di dalam bentuk gas for example ayat-ayat dia macam ni lah kalau ayat dalam soalan tu dia bagi tahu a sample of oxygen is collected over water ha, this is how you know that this oxygen is collected by the water displacement method so if let's say you nak uh, find the um, something about this oxygen you need to consider the fact that there is the partial pressure of H2O okay so sekarang ni dia bagi uh, information um, the volume of the oxygen gas Lepas tu dia bagi total pressure, okay, PT ialah 735.54, okay, bukan ATM, okay. And then, dia bagi um, the temperature here is 25 degrees Celsius. So, sekarang we have information on the volume of oxygen, we have information on the total pressure, And then, soalan suruh tanya, uh, dia tanya, how many grams of oxygen has been collected? So, soalan nak, the mass of oxygen gas. Ah, uh, And then, soalan pun bagi tahu, uh, vapor pressure, vapor pressure of water tu kiranya, water vapor punya pressure lah, which is the partial pressure of H2O, which is 23.8 torr. So, sekarang kita ada partial pressure of H2O juga. Okay, so apa yang Miss nampak kat sini lah. Bila dia bagi tahu yang oksigen tu collected over water je, you terus kena tahu yang pressure total of the gas is going to be partial pressure of oxygen gas plus kan dengan partial pressure of H2O. So, this is what comes in my mind first. Okay, the next thing that comes in my mind bila dia nak cari the mass Uh, ataupun gram ni gram ni ialah mass lah kan uh, the mass of oxygen is sekarang ni kita tahu total pressure kita tahu H2O punya partial pressure kita kena cari partial pressure of oxygen gas because once we have find the partial pressure of oxygen gas kita tahu yang PV equals to NRT and we know that uh, P equals to uh, eh, PV equals to uh, MRT over MR, uh, mass of oxygen kali kena RT over MR. So, kalau kita susun, it's going to be uh, mass of oxygen is equals to uh, partial pressure of oxygen, volume sama, okay. And then, MR mula mass bagikan dengan RT. So, Tugas utama sekarang ni to find the partial pressure of oxygen gas via the equation total pressure equals to partial pressure of oxygen plus dengan partial pressure of H2O and after that to find the mass we have to use the ideal gas equation. Okay, since that the total pressure is in torr, okay, H2O partial pressure of water vapor pun in torr, alright. So, kita bila kita nak cari partial pressure of oxygen gas, we will get it in torr unit. Tapi, bear in mind, we want to find the mass. We want to find the mass of oxygen gas. And the mass of oxygen gas can only be found through the ideal gas equation. So, kalau isi ada je pembabitan ideal gas equation, 
everything needs to be in SI unit, okay? So, since you look here that the unit of oxygen here in TOR, apa yang you kena buat? You kena tukar di dalam ATM. Sebab apa kita nak gunakan information partial pressure of oxygen in ATM ni supaya kita dapat Uh, the mass of oxygen di dalam ideal gas equation. So, sekarang ni daripada TOR nak tukar pada ATM, we just need to divide it by 760. So, but 1 ATM is equivalent to 760 TOR. Okay. Pasal unit conversion ni, don't worry. You'll be given this um, dalam exam. Nanti macam ni nak convert unit and whatsoever. So, sekarang ni you just bagi dengan 760 TOR. Okay, unit TOR. I can cancel out dengan unit TOR. So, what's left ialah unit ATM. So, therefore, you will get your uh, partial pressure of oxygen di dalam unit ATM. So, the value is 0.936 ATM. So, from the ideal gas equation, you know that PB equals to NRT. Tapi, kita nak cari mass of oxygen kan kat sini. So, to find the mass of oxygen gas, you susun nak equation ni. You kena derive sikit. So, you know that PB is equals to Mass RT over kandungan molar mass. Okay. So, sekarang ni we want to uh, to make the mass as a subject of the equation. So, it's going to be mass okay, of oxygen gas is equals to uh, partial pressure of oxygen gas kali kandungan uh, volume. Okay. Kalikan dengan molar mass. Bahagikan dengan R. Kalikan dengan T. Okay. Uh, so, sekarang ni, everything needs to be on point unit SI. Okay. Kalau once ada terlibat je R, ada je gas constant, everything needs to be in SI unit. Okay. So, okay, kat sini, um, dia tak derive tau. Dia just ambil je from here, okay. Kalau let's say you tak derive awal-awal, you ambil from here, you just susun to find the number of mole of oxygen gas first. Lepas tu, you tahu kan, from number of mole kan, equals to mass over molar mass. So, you susun equation tu, nak cari the mass is equals to number of mole kalikan dengan molar mass of oxygen gas. Okay, so uh, ada dua cara. Kalau you nak simplifykan terus macam ni pun boleh. You nak cari satu persatu macam ni pun boleh. Okay, so if let's say in this one, dia cari dulu number of mole of oxygen gas di mana um, pressure in ATM unit, partial pressure of oxygen gas in ATM kalikan dengan volume yang dibagi. Okay, bahagikan dengan um, gas constant 0.08206 liter ATM per mole per Kelvin times width 298 Kelvin and you will get 0.209 mole. Okay, the temperature actually is 25 degrees Celsius kan but if you change it to Kelvin, you will get 298. After that, when you want to find the mass of the oxygen gas, it's going to be the number of mole of the oxygen gas that you have found here times with the molar mass of oxygen gas. Oxygen ada dua oxygen atom, oxygen gas So, it's going to be 16 campur 16, 32. So, you will get the mass of oxygen gas in gram. Okay? So, I think that's all about Dalton's law.